Hi folks. Welcome to the Dan Instructor and Instructor Trainer Update for the Dan World Region. We're really excited to be able to provide this opportunity for you today as we wanted to be able to provide better service to the Dan instructors and the instructor trainers in our region. Instructor. I'm Laura Johnson. I'm one of the field reps here in Dan World. And today we have a very special guest um, that's going to be joining us. And before I introduce him, I would like to just give a couple of uh, housekeeping tips. So hopefully you can see us over, um, you can see us in YouTube Live and you can see a chat function. So in the chat function over to one side, you can write in comments such as your questions that you have for our speaker today and questions in general um, about the update for instructors and instructor trainers. But there's also one really important thing that we want to ask you to put in the chat box. And that's your name, your full name, and your Dan instructor number. That's going to enable us to be able to mark your records that you attended this instructor update. And if all you needed to do to, to uh, re-up your status and keep into active status is to attend an update, then this will count towards that. So go over now and put in your name and your Dan instructor number in the chat box so that we can get that information and make sure we have you on our update list. So with that, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our special guest today. We're going to have Jim Gunderson with us. Jim is the new director of training in the Dan Education or Dan Training Department. Jim is originally from Casper, Wyoming. He began diving in the high altitude, low visibility lakes in Wyoming in 1986. He became a scientific diver in 2003 with the University of Hawaii. And Jim is now a NAWI course director trainer with almost 5,000 recreational, scientific training and teaching dives under his belt. Currently, he is working on some technical diving certifications. Jim is also a 14 year alumni with the National Ski Patrol, where he was Senior Patroller, Emergency Care Instructor, and a Senior Patroller Examiner. Jim's currently the risk in the Risk Mitigation Department at DAN as the Assistant Director for Training. When not diving, he still enjoys downhill skiing. He's also an avid softball player and loves to ride his motorcycle. He's married to Danielle, and they have four and a half grown daughters and two granddaughters. So welcome, Jim, and thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks for that great introduction, Laura. Appreciate it. And welcome to all the members that are joining us. We really appreciate you being here. It's, uh, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Um, and I always joke that I have four and a half grown daughters. The half is a young lady who aged out of the foster care system that we kind of took in under our wing. So and we never did a formal adoption or guardianship or anything like that. So that's why I consider a half daughter. So anyway, <laughs> so without any further ado, as as we're as since we're teaching this, doing this update virtually, normally I like I like to run a presentation where we have it's very dynamic and we can stop and ask questions. But since we're doing this virtually, I'm going to ask that you type in your questions to Laura, and, and there will be a, an opportunity at the end to ask your questions, and we'll 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 deal with those questions at that time. So without any further ado, let me get my, my screen shared here and we can start. So welcome to the Dan Instructor Instructor Trainer Update. But we're gonna cover some departmental news, some expanded departmental duties, some statistics, COVID protocols. We're gonna talk about version 3.0, where we're going in the future, and we're gonna get to some frequent asked questions that we field, and then your Q&A. So let's continue on here. So. The first news, as most of you probably already know and, and may have read an oxygen window, Patty Siri has retired. She was with us for 12 years um, and she retired in, in July of 2020. She was absolutely instrumental in development of the Dan courses as you see them today. So just, I mean, huge kudos to the efforts and time and detail uh, that she put into developing these courses that we are using each and every day. She also coordinated the continuing medical education with CME workshops. That was for our hyperbaric uh, physicians and RNs and, and such that happened on a, on a 
uh, semi-annual basis. She has trained hundreds of Dan examiners, trainers, instructors, and providers over the years. Um, I've had the privilege of working with her starting in 2016, and um, it's been absolutely fantastic. Among her many accomplishments, she's a PADI course director. Um, in 2018, she was awarded the SSI Pro Platinum Diver. She earned an honorary NAWI membership in 2019, and by the way, she's one of only three people to ever earn that. Uh, she was inducted into the Women's Diving Hall of Fame in 2018, and we wish her the absolute best in her retirement. Um, she still is in contact with us and uh, is still helping me out from time to time, especially on our 3.0 project as a reviewer and contributor to that as we, as we continue to move forward. But we'll talk more about that here in a little bit. Um, as part of her retirement and the COVID protocols, which shifted some stuff around in Dan, training got merged in with risk mitigation. So we're now part of the risk mitigation team. Because actually truly part of mitigating risk is first aid training, so it was a very logical fit. And so in July, we became one department. Um, and this allows for some other in-house support and collaboration because now the training department is a department of one. So this, uh, coupled with the other team members, one of which is a Dan instructor, it allows me some in-house support for bouncing ideas off of and, and such. So we've had an expansion of some duties. And Francois Berman is our director of risk mitigation. And there's me as the assistant director um, and in my primary role of Dan training. And then Chloe Strauss, the rose between two thorns there, um, is a Dan instructor and is the coordinator for risk mitigation. So what these expanded duties we have are assisting in developing some various risk mitigation programs and e-learning modules, such as our HIRA guides, the um, e-learning e modules for uh, dive boat safety operations and air quality testing, which are free, by the way, if you go to our website, you'll see those in the available tab that you can take for free. Uh, we're helping to provide other tools, knowledge, and awareness and training across all areas of risk mitigation that Dan addresses. Um, and we're conducting the dive safety officer training, of course, the hybrid guide, which you may or may not be familiar with, webinars, and then various industry show presentations. Um, right now, virtually, obviously, but hopefully back to live and in-person uh, in 2021. Uh, we've also in, uh, encompassed uh, Dan safety products. So um, the folks down in the warehouse that process and ship all our orders and order our safety products like our O2 kits, our first aid kits, our SMBs, um, those types of things, they're now as part of risk mitigation as well. But my primary focus is still the Dan First Aid courses and support for you folks um, and your students and the providers as they have questions. So some, some statistics for us. As of 20, October of 2020, we've got 2,417 individual instructors, 917 instructor trainers, and 31 examiners globally. Um, not all of our instructors are active to actively teaching, but they are still in current status, so that's why they're included in this list. So some course statistics, 2019 was a banner year for course completion. So well done, hats off and a, and a huge pat on the back and kudos to you folks to contributing to those record numbers. And as we all know, 2020 has been very, very challenging. Um, but compared to 2019, we're only down 10% in course enrollment and 25% in course completion. So I think given all the restrictions and lockdowns and, and such, I think we're doing very well, all things considered. So here's some numbers. The columns in red are 2019, the columns in orange are 2020 as of October. Um, those numbers have obviously gone up um, in, if you include in November's numbers, but I wanted to give you the identical presentation that we gave um, during DEMA. Um, so they're not down too bad overall. So I think it's absolutely fantastic. So again, well done uh, during this time. Speaking of COVID-19, let's talk about the protocols. You'll see the link at the bottom of the page here. This is where you can download all of Dan's um, articles and such on COVID and related, such as disinfecting your gear and so on and so forth. And in there is a link to um, guidelines to teaching first aid courses. Um, that is dated June 3rd. Those have not been updated and there's been no changes in those updates um, since that time, that's why it has not been updated. But I want to touch touch base on a few key ones. First and foremost, follow your local protocols for social distancing. 
and your allowed business operations. That's going to vary from, from area to area, region to region, state to state, wherever you happen to be, follow your local protocols. Some are less restrictive, some are more restrictive. Just follow them so you make sure that you're in compliance with your local regulations. Minimize your class size to promote social distancing. If you've got anybody who is symptomatic, reschedule them. We don't want to take that risk of, uh, of uh, spreading this, this, this nasty little bug. You're going to disinfect and sanitize classroom spaces, mannequins, AEDs, and all your other equipment before and after classes. Advise students of the protocols you're implementing prior to the arrival so they know exactly what's going to be expected of them. If you're requiring them to wear masks and gloves, they need to have those so they can come prepared for those, um, for those um, courses. Inform students of the comp compliance expectations and what you expect from them during the class. Require all participants to wash and sanitize hands and wear that face covering, unless they're doing, of course, a ventilation skill where it's mouth, mouth to mask ventilation, then of course that mask, that mouth, that face covering is going to place. The chimney in conjunction with the MTV and, and demand valves. And if you got it, if you're using an MTV, just do a quick disinfection of it between students. For the demand valve skill, what you're going to do is you're going to the 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 student role playing the role is going to put their mask on the demand valve, test it, and then switch to the provider's own mask for the for the skill practice itself. That way, each diver or each student is using their own mask on their own face. For two person skills, um, the student using doing ventilations is going to is going to be used is going to have their mask off doing providing the ventilations. Whoever is doing compressions is wearing their face covering. As you're switching roles, you're going to swap those positions. So the person doing compressions can take their mask off to do the ventilations, and the person that was doing ventilations puts their mask back on. If your role-playing skills, like neuro, uh, neurological assessment skills, uh, stopping bleeding skills, et cetera, make sure that you guys are wearing, that your students are wearing gloves and you've got their face coverings um, as appropriate. Okay. Disinfect the mannequins between students. If you've got enough mannequins, give each student their own mannequin. And that way it's going to just reduce the, the, uh, the potential of some cross-contamination. And just continue to disinfect frequently to minimize the bioaccumulation if you're using the same mannequin for multiple students. Properly dispose of the non-rebreather mask. Just like a pocket mask, if you're teaching an O2 skill with a non-rebreather mask, Provide one to your students. They are available in the student kits. Make sure they're using their own mask on their own face. Single-use items, don't share them. Disinfect the exterior of the bag valve masks and use only on mannequins. So you're not going to put a, a bag valve mask with, their, with the student's pocket mask on in these, in these particular cases. Wear gloves. You know, they're part of the, of the practice anyway for, the, for a lot of the various skills. So this is this helps emphasize the um, the role of personal protective equipment in 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 our courses. If you're using skills like some of the HMLI skills that require irrigation, just watch that splatter. And utilize face coverings if you can for these, uh, the ones that might go over the eyes or you know even eye protection. All right, so let's talk about 3.0. Um, version 3.0, of course, COVID threw a wrench into the works, and what I mean by that is it just it took our plans and just uh, we weren't able to follow our plans as we had it designed, and it's uh, caused some various delays in getting version 3.0 materials out. However, and primarily one of the one of the pieces was our video shoot. However, we were able to finish our video shoot um, right before Thanksgiving. So the videos have been the the updated videos have been shot. They are now in post production, and we're hoping to start seeing those arrive to our office um, from the um, from the company that's doing the, the post production for us in mid January. So we're looking very much forward to that. This was not a complete video reshoot. This was selected skills to correct some errors and to update protocols. We're finishing up the material with all the recent um, ILCOR and A American Heart Association and ANSCOR, Australian New Zealand Council on Resuscitation, ERC, European Resusc Resuscitation Council, all the recommendations. So we're, we're wrapping up that. Some highlights include a sixth chain of survival instead of five. So we're going to be adding the recovery link into this. 
The use of real-time audiovisual feedback for CPR mannequins is now going to be required. It was recommended in version 2.1. It is now going to be required. So what this means is your mannequins have to have an audio and a visual cue when a proper compression has been delivered. It can be a click, it can be a whistle, it can be a beep, it can be an app. That's gonna vary from mannequin to mannequin and brand to brand. Uh, the the Lairdall QCPR, which we sell through the Dan store, um, has that, that QCPR, which is has a, has a Bluetooth module inside the chest, which can then tie to a free downloadable app for your phone or a tablet. It has an instructor module as well, so you can monitor up to six different mannequins. It's fantastic. Prestons have a set of lights in the in one shoulder that will will blink when when the compressions are given, and they also give an audible click. Those are acceptable uses of of audiovisual feedback mannequins. Some mannequins that are on the market are a piece of foam with a corrugated plastic tube as a spring for the compressions. Those do not provide that audiovisual feedback. Um, so they will not be allowed in version 3.0. The infant and children assisted ventilation rate has changed. It's now one breath every two to three seconds instead of three to five seconds. This is a change um, in the in the in the ILCOR standards and recommendations. That will be integrated into version 3.0. Some other additions: informed body airway obstruction. We have chest thrusts. We've, we've already had those anyway, but they are now being part of the mainstream um, instead of an uh, alternative to abdominal thrust. When you have, uh, say, someone who is grossly obese, you can't get their arms, your arms around their their stomach, or a pregnant woman. So chest thrusts are now being are, are now um, in in place. As our back blows, they're back in. For those of you who remember back blows from back in the day. And there are certain protocols as when these are used and when they are not used. You're going to, again, follow your local, your local guidelines if they are allowed or not allowed. Wound packing is also going to be included. And this is for deeper wounds. So um, if you do a you know, direct pressure on the top of an injury that's very, very deep, you're only going to stop the surface bleeding. The actual bleeding from down in the tissue is not going to be stopping. So we're going to be in introducing wound packing into that. Tourniquet is also um, being updated to five centimeters, two inches above the wound, which it is currently, or high and tight if you have multiple injuries or there's so much blood you can't, cannot see where the injury is. So either one of those will work. Secondary assessments have been changed to, um, originally was, you know, stop if they, if they complain of pain or tenderness. Uh, it's now been revised to say, if a life-threatening condition is identified, stop the assessment and activate EMS if not already accomplished. This was put in place um, in the event of, and I'll give this as an example, um, you're doing a secondary assessment on someone and you are, you're palpating the shoulders and they go, ow, that hurts because they've got an abrasion on their shoulder. It is not life-threatening. It's just a scratch. It's a scrape. They might be oozing blood, but it's not life-threatening. But if you stop there, you might miss the, the um, uh, internal bleeding from, a, from a, a ruptured spleen or something like that that would be very, very hard on palpation of the stomach, uh, of the abdomen. So that's why this was put in. So those, those life-threatening conditions are not missed. Uh, we're going to be adding BVM, bag valve mass, to CPR and, and the BLS course courses. This is a response to CPR guidelines with COVID-19. Um, when, when possible, if doing CPR in real life, you're going to be giving ventilations with a BVM rather than mouth, mouth to mask. This is going to help um, mitigate uh, the risk of aerosol um, gen, uh, generation due to the um, compressions of, of CPR. And so we're going to be introducing BVM into those courses. We'll talk about what that's going to mean for you here in a little bit. So look into the future here. This is our 3.0 is in compliance with the 2019, 2020 ill core guidelines. It incorporates recommendations from, and I've already talked about these, American Heart Association, Australia, New Zealand Council on Resuscitation and the European Resuscitation Council. The focus of, th of version 3.0 is gonna be our EO2 course, our BLS course and DFA Pro. The other courses are still going to be there, but our focus is going to be on these three because these are our primary courses that that um, that are being taught across all regions. 
for Ilcor, there's just some Ilcor related updates, so, so no major changes with EO2. As mentioned, we're going to be, we're going to be incorporating BVM with two rescuer and one rec. BLS, we're going to be incorporating BVM. We're also going to, to kind of mold BLS and HCP together. So we're going to be including two rescuer adult and one and two rescuer child and infant CPR. Um, this is to make a more complete and robust course, um, which is going to be more applicable across the board in, in many other jurisdictions. And of course, in DFA Pro, this is Dan's base course. And what I mean by that is our flagship course is still EO2. It is still the most popular course that we teach. But we use DFA Pro as our base course when doing the 3.0 guidelines because all the component courses, EO2, BLS, HCP, Neuro, and HMLI are incorporated into DFA Pro. So we decided to work on DFA Pro and then extract the course materials out for the individual courses. This made it easier logistically in-house here for our work. That's why we're doing everything based off of DFA Pro. Um, our anticipated uh, launch is in quarter one, probably late in quarter one in 20, in 2021. So we got well, there's going to be a transition time from version 2.1 to 3.0. So it's going to go through the end of 2021. It's not going to be immediate. You know, you can't teach 2.1. Everyone's got to go to 3.0 right away. Both versions will be available. 3.0 will be available after instructors complete the mandatory update. This will be an online update. To bring you up to speed and all the all the changes that we've made from 2.1 to 3.0. That way, everybody's on the same page and is going to be working um, working identically um, in version 3.0. It will be a mandatory update for every instructor. All instructors must complete this the update to teach 3.0. You will not be able to teach 3.0 until the update is completed. Examiners and trainers will have three months to complete the update. And the reason is there's going to be some skills that the trainers and examiners might need to help the instructors get up to speed with, get familiar with. Um, since the focus is going to be on DFA Pro, DEMP instructor trainers are recommended to upgrade to full suite. And this is one of those updates that trainers and examiners are going to want to be prepared for, um, is teaching those DEMP ITs the additional skills they need to teach DFA Pro and get them signed off on those to teach those skills. BLS and HCP instructor will need to get with a trainer or examiner to add the BVM skill if you've not already if you're not already an EO2 DEMP or full suite instructor. So if you don't know how to use a BVM, never seen one before, other than maybe in a picture, you're going to get with a trainer um, and and get get familiar and get get uh, get demonstration quality skills with that with that with that uh, bag valve mask, the BVM. Any BLS, if you're just a BLS instructor, you're going to want to get with a trainer or examiner to add the, the, the CPR for one and two rescue or adult child and infant as well. Because BLS right now is only is adult only, one rescuer. So now we're adding the second rescuer for adults and then child and infant one and two rescuer. So you're going to want to get familiar with the trainers and examiners um, so they can help you get familiar with those skills. And it's recommended all instructors upgrade to full suite. And the reason for this is this makes your marketability that much stronger and better across the board. You're going to be able to offer more courses to more people. And make, that makes you uh, the opportunity to make, make, make yourself more marketable and make some more money and, and uh, to train more providers. So we have more providers out in the field, which is our, our end goal. It's anticipated version 2.1 will be turned off on December 31st of 2021. So again, we're going to give you, we're going to get 3.0 released as quickly as we possibly can and give you as much transition time. While the transition is going on, you can still be able to teach 3.0 and 2.1 once you, and you can teach 3.0 once you've completed the update. But you're going to have to have all your version 2.1 courses wrapped up and approved before December 31st of 2021. Let's talk about some frequently asked questions about some common calls and emails that we get here in the training department on a regular basis. And the question is, I need my certification card. Where can I find it? You're going to have your student log into dan.diverelearning.com using their account. Click on the completed tab and sec select the course desired. You'll see a gray course record box. Next to the course record box, you'll find that credential card. And when appropriate for a BLS course and DFA Pro, you'll see a, a printable certificate. 
When you click on those images in the in the completed tab in the in the course of um, that you want, those are printable and savable image files. The the first one, the first the, the middle graphic that you see is, is a wallet sized um, credential card, and the certificate when it's available in the course is an eight and a half by eleven frameable certificate. So a similar question: When do my teaching credentials expire? You can find this out as well as an, as an instructor by, by doing the same thing, logging onto the e-learning platform and then clicking on the teaching tab. And you can see right here, my teaching credential for DFA Pro expires January 28th of 2022. And that's where I can find that. And these are also printable and savable um, image files. So if you wanted to take that certificate and um, frame it and put it on your wall or Played in your shop, great. Encourage you to do so. I sent an invitation to, to a student for this course. They're not seeing it. How do we fix this? So there's several possible answers. You can uh, ensure that there are no typographical errors in the email address and, and resend the invitation if necessary. I have seen, and I've done this myself, um, I'm sending to, to student at gmail.com, but I spell mail, M-I-A-L, instead of M-A-I-L. And so there might be a typo. So just resend the invitation. Not a big deal. If the student accidentally deleted it, resend the invitation. And sometimes there's a technical glitch. As a last resort, you, can, you or the student can give us a call at this number using option four. And we're happy to, um, to make the adjustments in, in the student's profile to add that course and add you as the instructor for that course. And that, that student will then show up in your, in your dashboard. Mm -hmm. I can't see my students. What's going on? This is typically due to one of two things. Um, your teaching status has, your, your DAN membership has expired, or your teaching status for a given course has expired. If it's not one of those two, call us at DAN training at that same number above, and we'll help you work through it. Uh, but check to see if your membership has expired, and, and check go back and check your teaching credentials for that given course and see if that's expired. Um, and if it has, there's there's options of getting that back. And attending this update is one of them. So at this time, I'm going to open it up for questions. So Laura, questions. Hi, Jim. Can you hear me again? I can. OK, great. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for that information. That's actually a lot of changes happening. I'm so glad that you were able to update um, myself and the instructors and the trainers in our region with that information um we do we do have a couple questions that i'm sure are going to pop up soon in the chat box so remember team when you're seeing uh the as you're seeing the presentation go over to the chat box in the live youtube uh, video and you can put in your questions okay and i'll read them out to jim so while we're waiting for more questions to come in, Jim, I actually have a, a few questions and clarifications. Okay. Um, you had mentioned, and I think it was the last slide, and, and if we misspelled um, someone's email in the invite that we sent them through e-learning, that we should resend it. So how exactly do you resend it? Is there a way to edit that email in the student's record and hit a resend button? Or do we have to actually enter that student as another person in our course? You have to enter that student as another person in your course. OK. And what should we do with that student who has got the the incorrect email. Is there any kind of problem? So there's going to be a duplicate record. Do we need to, yeah. to let training know about that? Or is there a way to delete that invitation? Great question. Um, so what I would do and what I've done in my own dashboard is I've created a junk class folder for those typo errors because there's no way to remove those invitations from your dashboard. So I just take that student that I made the typographical error on or a student that says, hey, I was interested, but I'm not anymore. You know, I, I, I moved somewhere or whatever the, the reason is. And I will just take that student and I will move them into that junk folder and it helps clean up my dashboard. OK. All right. Um, that's that's really helpful. I also have a lot of instructors who ask me that same question. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it okay. it's, it's impossible. OK. 
So um, I do actually have one more question too before I go over into the, the general questions in the chat. You had mentioned, and I understand that instructors who currently only teach DEMP are going to need to get with either a trainer or an examiner to be able to add on the additional skills they need to teach the full suite. So I, I know that we have instructors and trainers in our region that are that are very uh, spread out. I can see just from who's who's watching our YouTube live, we've got instructors from uh, the Virgin Islands, from Belize, from Peru, from um, also I think we've got a couple from the Asia Pacific, the 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 Asia area like in Guam and Micronesia. Um, sometimes those instructors are so far removed from any other instructor or instructor trainer, there's just not an, an one nearby. What do you recommend for them to be able, who do you recommend they contact to be able to find an instructor or a trainer who, who can help them to upgrade if they're so far away? Are you there, Laura? Yes, I can hear you now. <laughs> I, my computer went completely sideways on me. I'm now on my phone. Okay. Did you do want me to repeat the question for you? You probably didn't yeah. hear that, did you? Okay. I didn't, hear a, I didn't hear a thing, so. No, no problem. Okay, so I was saying that that we, we have quite a few people, um, quite a few instructors and trainers that are joining us today that are from all over the Dan region. There, um, as, as I mentioned before, we have instructors that are from the Virgin Islands, from Peru, from Belize, from Puerto Rico, and we also have some from Guam. Um, so since our instructors are so spread out, um, a lot of times they don't have easy access to a trainer or to an examiner if they're only currently a DEMP instructor and they need to add on the DF, the additional pros uh, skills to be able to teach the DFA Pro with the new version. So what do you recommend for those instructors or trainers to do? Who do they contact? How can they get in touch with a, an instructor or trainer that's so far away? What do you recommend? You know, that's, a, that's another great, great question um, that I, I would suggest they reach out to me at oxygen at dan.org on a rate on on an as needed basis and we'll just we'll 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 problem solve each one of those individually oxygen at dan.org correct yep. okay thanks that's a big help um so I see we also have some questions now coming into our chat so I'm going to read off some of those for you we've got some instructors who have um, been typing their their either their member number or their instructor number in their chat and we really appreciate that we're going to do our best to make sure that they uh, the update counts for them and we mark in the record that they attended the update some of the instructors are saying they don't know their instructor or their trainer number if you're watching us and that's the case please just be to sure be sure to put in your full name and we'll do our best to try to look up your instructor number at a later date to be able to add it on. You can also email us at that same email, oxygen at dan.org, uh, to be able to, to get it, to make sure that we've got your instructor number. Remember, the update only counts if you're actually watching us live. So um, we've got a question here um, that says, is there what's up? Beeper or tel Telegram account for Dan to contact for those of us who are living so far away from the U.S. So, Jim, I'll go ahead and answer that question. Um, most of the Dan office that's located in the United States, which is where the Dan World Training Department also is based from, and is where Jim is based from, uh, do not work up. Or from Viper, or from Viber, or from Telegram. However, you can contact us by email. That's probably the best way if you're not able to actually call the the Dan Training Department. Um, the email again is oxygen at dan.org. Usually, the Dan Training Department is about getting back to the um, the Dan instructors and trainers quickly with a, the best answer that they can. Okay. 
And um, we've got a question in here that says, hi, Jim, how do you resend a course information to a student without creating the same student as a new instructor, as a new student? And I think that's exactly the same question that I just asked a few moments ago. So again, the answer to that one is you actually do have to create a new student to be able to, to resend that. Um, we've got another question in here, and it says, uh, great, or it actually has a comment, good idea with the junk folder. I was battling with trying to keep my dashboard clear from those students, uh, from those student error or incomplete courses. So yes, thank you for that. Most welcome. Okay, a couple more questions here. Um, we've got a question from Dave, and he says, there are a number of courses that I have completed, um, mostly updates, but look to be lacking approval. What needs to be done to have the approval resolved? Just just email me the um, uh, just email me the, your information and at oxygenofdan.org, and I can take care of that on, on we can take care of that on our end. Okay, sounds great. So you've got your answer, Dave. Go ahead and send an email to Jim, and he'll be happy to look at that for you. Um, Jim asked us, can we get a copy of today's presentation? Assuming he's talking about the PowerPoint presentation. And actually, the uh, this update is available on our YouTube channel at uh, Dan TV. Uh, okay, so if you need a copy, um, Jim, Jim, I think it's Jim, Jim Miller. Yes, he was the one who asked that question. You can share, actually, share the link um, of this update um, to to um, any other instructors or trainers who were not able to watch it. Or you can log on. You can log on to YouTube and go to, to go to the Dan TV channel, which is the Dan USA Dan World channel, and you'll be able to see this presentation in its entirety. Great. Well, okay. Actually, it'll be the one I gave at DEMA, but it's the exact same information. Okay. Great. We've also got a comment from Abner from Belize. He says, um, "Hi, Laura, and the trainings. I also do temperature checks and logs." So um, that's thanks for that tip, Abner. That's if, especially if that happens to be a requirement in your area, that's a great thing to do. As Jim said, it's always important to make sure where the requirements in your area are when you're going to be doing courses from now on. Okay, and Abner adds in one more comment. He says, "Yes, sanitizing of hands, mannequins, uh, AEDs, and all other equipment for BLS, CPR, and first aid." Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. Exactly Thank right. you for bringing that up. Okay, folks, well, do you, if you have any other questions, be sure to go ahead and type them in the chat box right now. Um, I do want to, to make a quick announcement before we get to our last couple questions. Um, the update is also going to be presented. The same update is going to be presented in Spanish. Uh, we had hoped to be able to do that this week, but we are going to actually schedule it for January of 2021. So if you wanted to see the presentation instead instead of in, um, in Spanish, instead of in English, if it's difficult for you to catch on to everything, we will be repeating this presentation, the update for the instructor, instructor trainers in January. So just keep an eye out in your emails for um, for the announcement of the exact date that that's going to be available. And actually, our our presenter for the Spanish version is going to be Virginia Albertango, so we look forward to having her with us in January to be able to do that presentation. I see a couple more questions coming in. Um, let's see. Quick note, it looks like it's from Valentine. He says, note the individuals may not be able to post questions in this chat. Remind them they have to be logged into their YouTube account. Yeah, that's exactly right. Thank you, uh, Valentine. Only people who are logged into their account can type in the questions right now. Um, we've actually got a question that looks like it's coming maybe from our Dan Europe region. Um, and he asked, will there be Arabic versions of Dan's training courses and materials anytime soon, please? Actually, I'm going to refer that question to a different contact. Um, since you're, I'm assuming, living in either the Middle East or Northern Africa um, or somewhere somewhere in the region where, where Arabic is the main language, in those countries, 
Uh, Dan Europe is actually the region of Dan that directs the training courses. Um, their updates are quite different from ours because they're in different versions of the courses and the actual courses I believe that they offer slightly different. So I would encourage you to contact the Dan Europe region and their mail, their email is mail at daneurope.org. That's their main email for their office. So please do check with their region. Um, our update is specifically today for instructors in the Dan World region, and the Dan World region is defined as Latin America, the Caribbean, and the U.S. protectorates. So any Dan instructors in that region, this is the correct information for your Dan courses. If you're watching us from another Dan region, I recommend that you contact your Dan region to be able to get information on those courses. We've got um, one, let's see, two more questions here. Okay, uh -oh. Abner says, I use Preston mannequins with indicator lights, anti-choke vest for the hemlock maneuver, and the back slaps. Lungs can be replaced in these mannequins. Have good experience with the BVM. Are you familiar with those mannequins, the Preston mannequins, Jim? Yeah, in fact, I, in fact, I own a set of them. Um, they're, they're great mannequins. So, yes, I am. And, and they do meet those that, that criteria for the... The audio visual feedback with those lights in the shoulder and the, and the clicking of the chest. Okay, great. Um, and then we have a question that said, I'm going to translate this because this one actually came in in Spanish and it says, good afternoon. Will this video be available on the YouTube to see it in Spanish with translations? So, um, I'm going to answer this in Spanish. <laughs> sí, vamos a hacer una, una actualización para instructores y instructores, instru eh, entrenadores. Eh, estaba programado para esta semana, pero lamentable tuvimos que cambiar la fecha y lo vamos a anunciar para su nueva fecha en enero de 2021. Va a ser esta misma presentación, pero nuestro examinadora y representante de Dan, Virginia Alte, a ver, tengo, va a estar disponible para, eh, para ayudarnos con esta misma presentación, pero en, en vivo, en español, para que puedan poner más preguntas. So, thank you for that question. And then I have, um, let's see, one more question from Kevin. He says, there, are there any other crossover courses? I'm a Patty EFR, HA, BCLS and New York um, EMT and EMT instructor. So Kevin, I take it from that question that you're not currently, um, uh, you're not in current status as a Dan instructor, instructor trainer, but you would like to be, and you're looking for how to do a crossover in order to do that. So um, that's, that's probably a better question for you, Jim. Great, yeah, thank you. And that's a great question. Um, on our radar for 2021, is developing a crossover course um, from BHA or another organization into DAN. So we, it is on the radar, we don't have it developed yet. Okay, so keep an eye out from that, um, an announcement, announcement coming. In the meantime, since there's not currently um, a crossover <laughs> available, we can help you to find an instructor or an instructor trainer in your area if you'll just email us to oxygen at dan.org and we'll be happy to help you locate one so you can take the course. Okay, let's see. Uh, just a comment from Freddie. He says, thank you very much. This is a great activity. I'll be sure to write to oxygen at dan.org. Be sure, Perfect. Uh, Freddie. Voy a comentar que tu, tu email, como lo apuntaste, está en español. El email es o x y g a n como en inglés. <laughs> so that's the correct email. There we go. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Jim. We really appreciate you helping us to answer those questions. Absolutely. And we, we will be in touch with you by email. Um, thank you so much for all of the instructors and instructor trainers who have joined us today from the Danrel region for this update. Um, keep in mind that you're going to be hearing more from Dan Training as the new version is going to be rolled out. So um, 
If you have any questions in the meantime, just send us an email and we'll be in touch. Thanks. Thank you guys and everybody have a great evening. Have a great evening. Sorry about the technical glitch. <laughs> no problems. <laughs> all right. Thanks all.